Hi, my name is Steve Korn. I'm a Seattle-based photographer. Thanks for having a look at my ghost project. This is a uh, project that I started in 2022. And it's, you know, it's it's not what I would think of as, as you know, new territory for me. I've been shooting uh, dancers since about 2007. Um, so it seemed like kind of a logical place for me to arrive for a personal project. One of the things that I've always really valued in dance photography, um, in addition to to the the lines that a that a dancer can create, is the form of fabric and the movement that fabric creates and the sort of chaos that it can create. And so, with this project, I wanted to sort of explore um, the kind of contrast of the human form in, you know, sort of working against and with the chaotic movement of the fabric and the flow of the fabric. Um, interestingly, I think the sort of initial inspiration for this project was not really ghosts, but it was rather um, jellyfish. Um, and, and the root of that, I guess, really kind of comes from the photography of Howard Schatz. Howard is a really fantastic photographer who um, has explored a lot of underwater photography through the years. I've always admired it. Um, and I wanted to do something that, that kind of was my take on that to some degree, some of that aesthetic. Uh, but I didn't want to do it underwater. And I thought that some of the things that make it, um, that, that I might be able to explore that are separate from what Howard's doing is the ability to play with more varied lighting uh, and to play with color. Um, and those are both things that are difficult to do underwater. Uh, so that's that's kind of what drove some of the technical choices and, and pushed some of my sort of creative exploration because there were just more opportunities open to me, I think, being that, um, that we didn't have to figure out how to do everything underwater. So as I said, I was... Uh, thinking of this in relation to jellyfish and the, the beautiful shapes that, that jellyfish make with their membranes um, and the beautiful colors um, that are often associated with undersea uh, life. And, you know, I immediately started photographing these and thought to myself, wow, these aren't jellyfish, these are ghosts. Um, it just seemed like sort of an obvious uh, connection there. You know, the moment you put a sheet over someone's head, you immediately think ghost. But it also sort of just made me think of ghosts in a little bit of a different way. Um, and that, that ghosts kind of metaphorically um, can be anything that has this sort of ephemeral quality, something that's there for one moment and gone. Um, and And really, that's what these figures are. It's a captured fraction of a second, you know, literally, you know, a 70,000th of a second. Um, and the fabric will never move this way again. The dancer might try to replicate a certain position. Um, but really, it is a, a captured moment. It's a ghost of a moment. It's ephemeral. It's there. It's gone. Um, and as I say in my description, I've realized that that this theme is kind of a common one for me in photography that I really do love this idea of being able to freeze things. Um, like in my face project, to be able to, to, to freeze someone's face and just really get a good look at them, uh, which we don't often get to do in day to day encounters with others. Uh, and I, I think it's because being someone with ADHD and how things are, you know, my attention's drawn this way and that pretty quickly. Um, it's nice to be able to, to have something, to be able to grab onto it, hold onto it for a minute and, um, and see really what's happening in that instant, in that moment. And I think that, um, so in some ways that, that metaphorically these ghost images do that. This is that fraction of a second captured. Um, it also looks like a ghost, <laughs> you know, um, and we also just have that, this just sort of beautiful dance between the organic lines of the human body against this this veil of of color and texture and movement which i think is just really beautiful and fascinating 
as I shot each of the dancers, and I, boy, I want to say I worked with maybe six or seven different dancers through this process, um, I was really amazed at how um, each of them really brought something different uh, to the project, how they all moved a little bit differently. There were certain constraints that I, that I had to work within um, just for space, essentially, is that I, I couldn't really have super giant, broad arms and legs extended kind of, kind of uh, poses. I typically asked for things to be a little more compact um, or vertical lines like you can see in this one. Um, you know, so, so, you know, they, they all did something a little different. One of the things I love about this image is just that, you know, that half of her face is exposed. Um, and again, through the veil, that sort of ghostly suggestion of her form, that ghostly face just staring right at the camera. Um, yeah, there's just something, something about them that, um, really intrigues me really, you know, the way that the, that the shadow, that the cloth creates on her body, I think is, is really amazing. It's, it's just this other kind of otherworldly quality about it that I think is really fascinating. I would say that my photography in general is not very smiley, <laughs> you know, um, so, you know, these, these sort of a little more artful kind of vibes, a little more serious kinds of moments, um, reflective moments, those kinds of things I think come across in this as well. Every one of the subjects that I photographed for this, I lit them a little differently. So in some ways, um, I was really exploring how light might work with these fabrics and with the subjects. Um, and with some photographs like this one, for example, I used some really unconventional lighting practices, things that I actually learned more from product photography. Um, creating like in this instance this sort of light that wrapped around the subject and sort of made an edge of light all the way around um, his form and around the form of the cloth um, essentially through the use of of one light and being able to sort of surround the uh, the subject that way which was really kind of an interesting thing to me and leaving the sort of dark void in the center um, I did some, you know, had some fun with uh, with using a little bit of motion blur, using some combinations of traditional strobe photography to really freeze and some constant light so that I could play with the shutter speed a little bit and get these colors and a little bit of, of form blur to move through the image. Um, and I think it created a little more of an, an even sort of ghostly ephemeral kind of effect and in some ways it adds a little bit of motion back into this frozen moment um, so again you know experimenting with with color and line um, and using technique in a couple of different ways just to see what what we would get you know from a, from a very sort of experimental standpoint this again is one of those interesting combinations where I, I use that technique I, that I described a moment before surrounding my subject with light and then I used a constant light in the middle to create a little bit of, of movement and a little bit of motion blur and it almost created this kind of underwater sort of effect. So, you know, and, and combine that with, uh, with again, the fact that, that all of these dancers moved so, so beautifully and brought something interesting and elegant and unique to this project, um, it, it, it was really fascinating to me. When we talk about ghosts, oftentimes, you know, maybe the thought of, of religion <laughs> starts to enter into it. And I definitely started seeing that in some of these images. Um, this almost, you know, has some kind of, you know, some, some sort of deity or something, some kind of, you know, religious overtone to it, um, subtly. Um, I think there's, there's some, some more as we progress along here that, that have that as well. But I think that that, that's something that started to enter into, into the imagery as well. Again, just experimenting with different light concepts, different colors, um, 
shapes here playing with you know very little light trying to put just almost almost creating a silhouette with the the dancer's form and using a dark silk essentially this again is is using that kind of that product lighting um, and the uh, constant light to create a little bit of motion blur um, and one of the things that I really liked about this is that it it reminded me a little bit of those uh, old French um, advertising posters from the early part of the century the early part of the 20th century I want to say um, Cap Capietti or Cap Capoletti I think is the the designer who created a lot of these and you, you go into most any cafe these days and you can see his work um, but it started to make me think about those images as well um, so I could almost see these like on a on a bottle <laughs> you know uh, of French wine or something um, it had it just had some of that quality to it again more sort of religious iconography and playing with color you know so it's really these combinations of things this these combinations of colors I, I you know wanted to experiment with you know there's really only probably four or five different pieces of fabric that I had red white blue um, navy blue I think I have a gold one you know and so a lot of the variation that I created with that was through the use of lighting through the use of different colored backdrops um, and then the different kind of qualities that that each dancer brought to this I feel really fortunate to know a lot of amazing dancers and they um, were all very kind to um, to trust me in this process as you can see uh, the dancers are nude um, and you know these aren't things that they normally probably would do um, but they trusted me in this process and, and I'm grateful for that and I feel like um, like having them nude with the fabric was was actually kind of an important element of it um, I don't really believe in in gratuitous nudity uh, I don't think there's any point in that but I felt like um, there's an organic quality about the form uh, beneath the cloth and that there are no interrupted lines um, so for example in this image um, you can see this is my friend Joe how you know that that line there is not interrupted by a pair of shorts or something like that which to me um, would break that line for one thing and secondly I think as soon as you see um, another piece of fabric then that connection between the organic human form and the simple fabric kind of gets broken and it also um, sort of grounds the images in a way that's contrary to this kind of ghost type theme right that suddenly it's you know we're working within the um, the ideology of you know human um, vulnerability and and morality and shame and all those kinds of things that people often associate with the um, bare human form um, and so I feel like by by not incorporating that those questions hopefully aren't aren't part of the conversation that it's simply a form um, and a piece of fabric and a moment captured And, you know, when it really comes down to it, I think that those are characteristics of my photography in general that I, you know, in photography in general, it's, you know, you, you hear about the decisive moment, you know, and um, the process of making these photographs, you know, is, is asking a dancer to jump again and again and again. And for, you know, every 10 times that they jump, um, you know, we might have one image that that's like, oh wow, that was a really great one, and you know, there's it's so much of it is left to to chance. Um, obviously, the dancer supplies an amazing form, has an incredible ability to 
um, to take a suggestion and then do that with their body, which is, which is pretty astounding to me. Um, and then, you know, hoping that the fabric cooperates and oftentimes we do something, oh, that's really great. Let's try it again, but maybe rotate the fabric this way and see if it moves a little better. Um, you know, and, and again, trying again and again and again, and then you kept, you know, you capture a handful of, of really phenomenal images and that's just part of the process. I think that this project, um, you know, there, I think there's artistic merit to it. Uh, I've shown it um, in, you know, physical prints and gotten a lot of nice reception. Um, it's won some awards. It's, you know, it's, it's uh, I think, been received well. But I think it also has some real commercial viability. I can totally see, uh, you know, someone jumping like this with a really cool pair of of trainers on or you know something like that i think that you know dance obviously it's to me it's it's sort of the the meeting of athleticism and art um so i think that uh it definitely has some some commercial viability i think as well um and if for no other reason that that it really celebrates human ability and accomplishment um, and as being someone who's grown up in the arts and in the performing arts, um, I think that's something about working with artists and dancers that I really um, connect to and really admire. And, and with athletes, is that there's that that performative element that you, you know, unlike photography. I mean, I, there, there is a performative element to photography where someone asks me to do something, I, I do have to do it right now, and I have to get it. But when you're performing on a stage or, or performing. Um, you know, an artwork that, that is a live presentation, um, you, you have to go out and make it happen now. And, um, I think that's one of the amazing things about working with dancers and, and one of the things that I, I feel like I understand and connect with them on that level. So, well, I hope you have, uh, enjoyed taking a, a quick look at my ghost project. If you go to my website, you'll see that there, um, is, quite a few more um, images to this series um, and if you want to look at my my profile here a little bit you can hopefully see some future projects as they come up and read a little bit of my bio um, or visit my Instagram so thank you for uh, for checking out the ghost project and thanks to the personal photography project for presenting my work and being so encouraging and supportive thanks <music>